another faction in the Trump administration, isn't it? Of course, that is the kosher nostra, that is the people around uh, Bibi Netanyahu and the people that, that Trump you know, basically has in common with Bibi Netanyahu, including his own son-in-law. Um, and we had a couple of stories on this uh, kosher nostra connection to Donald Trump this week. One was published here at henrymaco.com. Henry's a very interesting thinker, of course. He's another Canadian who was driven out of his university for being politically incorrect uh, and has been doing interesting alternative media work ever since. Uh, and, and these two stories, this one and the next one, which was the Politico story uh, about the same topic, uh, which was, by the way, written by this character, Ben Schlesinger, uh, or Schreckinger, whatever his name is, who was the same guy who was trying to blame veterans today for being a Russian patsy. Uh, but, but this was a pretty good story, actually, reasonably good for mainstream. Uh, and it points out that this Hasidic Jewish movement, the Chabad Lubavitch movement, which is apparently a kind of a spinoff from Hasidic Judaism that's not recognized as, as Orthodox by the other Orthodox Jews, uh, is, is huge in Russia. And it's been kind of you know, very central or at least overlapping with the Russian Jewish mob, that is the Kosher Nostra, which is by far the biggest and nastiest mob on earth, as we learned in, in this great book I just read a couple of weeks ago, Tony, called, uh, called Red Mafia by a guy named Robert Friedman, who's a Jewish American uh, who probably paid for his research with his life. Um, so this information is so important, and yet really it's weird, isn't it, that the New York Times, Washington Post, CNN, these people who are going after Trump will not go after this because maybe they're more or less part of the same kosher nostra. Well, I'd have to say that these stories that we've been doing over three weeks now on Putin, uh, the Jewish mafia in Russia, in the United States, and now we uh, narrow it down to something called Chabad Lubavitch. Chabad Lubavitch, how am I doing with that? that That's this probably is, close enough. I'm, I'm not really a Yiddish or yeah. speaker myself, so. You know. But the, but this this has uh, agencies, this has outlets in a, a thousand cities. It's very strong in Russia and it's very strong in the United States. Jared Kushner is a big part of it. Donald Trump is a big part of it. And uh, uh, Vladimir Putin is a big part of it. And you know this started to come to light on that book that you refer to. We re read a uh, we we covered a story about the book Robert Friedman's book Red Maf Mafia, which is kind of the Cold War background to what's going on now. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, in reading these articles and other ones that I linked to as a because this story is so fascinating, you start to see a picture of all Donald Trump's real estate deals and. Uh, this uh, Sim, uh, Simeon uh, Moglovich is very important in the earlier <laughs> yeah. stage of this story, but then we have Roman. Hey, by, the, by the way, he, he's the guy. Who, stop. He's, he's probably the guy who killed Friedman. He's, uh, he, Roman, uh, yeah, and uh, Roman Ab Abramovich is like Putin's mentor, and so it turns out Putin is indeed been cultivated by the uh, Russian billionaires, and he, you know, he's unfriendly with some and friendly with others, and the ones with whom he's friendly are part of this. Shabad Lubavitch organization, as is Trump. And it, it, we've got to go into this. I, I noticed that Magna International, Frank Stronick, who has a lot to do with the automotive industry in Canada, he, he's part of this whole network. It's uh, you know, a fascinating story. Felix Sater and his Bayrock group you know, saved Trump's real estate empire. And it's all involved with the mob and the gambling casinos and such and such. And I, I have to say that these stories are significantly transforming my geopolitical understanding of the contemporary situation these days. Mm -hmm. Look into this. Yeah. That's right. And, and a shout out to the team at Veterans Today that was on top of this Russian mob connection to Donald Trump long before anybody else was that I saw anyway. Uh, we were harping yeah, on this it, during the entire campaign. And it's just round the clock on CNN and NBC on uh, Trump and Putin and Russia and fixing the election and don't touch this deep state so, side of the story. Yeah, yeah never they, mention they, the Russian they, mafia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's disgusting. I mean, they, the mainstream can't even yeah. report on or, organized crime. It's, I guess they are organized they crime. They are organized crime. And speaking about organized crime, how about the crimes of Zion, our ever popular category about horrendous behavior out of Israel. Um, here we have a, a rundown of the Israeli leaders who want to destroy the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is the oldest and greatest Islamic 
architectural monument. It's been uh, in say, the sacred space of Palestine pretty much ever since Islam existed, that they want to blow it up and create a blood sacrifice temple in its place. And so this article from the Electronic Intifada gives us a rundown on these maniacs who, who want to start World War III by destroying the Al-Aqsa Mosque and slaughtering pig heifers and babies or whatever else they slaughter in there. Uh, Yehuda Glick is one of their ringleaders. He held a temple movement emergency session in the Knesset recently, and the attendees included Rabbi Yisrael Ariel, who calls for genocide against Palestinians quite openly, Ben C. Gopstein, who is part of this movement called Lehava, that is basically threatening any Jews who have the temerity, nay, the audacity to actually marry a non-Jew. They're going to come after you if you try that. So these people are fanatical you know, creeps. And uh, unfortunately, they have a tremendous amount of power in Israel. Yes, this is a uh, blood curdling, uh, frankly, to read this through. Uh, I heard it said by a Mohawk uh, friend of mine that uh, the highest level of politics is religious politics. And the politics going on on uh, what uh, Jews refer to as the Temple Mount, which uh, Arabs refer to as Haram al-Sharif, uh, the Dome of the Rock, what uh, the, the takeover, the very rapid aggressions directed at Al-Aqsa Mosque and the apparent efforts to eject uh, Muslims from this holy site to take it over and begin construction of the third temple. I mean, this has cosmic implications in Jerusalem. Uh, and of course, Jerusalem is a a core of uh, the monotheistic religions, uh, all the monotheistic religions. And when you read what Israel, Ariel, uh, the things he says, like, we will conquer Iraq and Turkey and get Iran, uh, different politicians say, the temple is the ID card of the people of Israel, the movement to take over this site and to begin the construction of uh, the throne to govern the world at the end of the world in the prophesied times when the Messiah's return in the different traditions. And, you know, this is something that, for instance, uh, Latter-day Saints, Mo Mormons are very much into this. Uh, Baha'is are very much into this. This is really the pinnacle of uh, politics uh, uh, being waged in religious terms, which is the extremism is 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 uh, rampant in this situation. Well, it sure looks to me, Tony, like the people who want to destroy Al Aqsa and build a blood sacrifice temple in its place and uh, put the Messiah on the throne to rule the world from Jerusalem. That so-called Messiah for them is going to be the Antichrist for everybody else. But let's let's move on. And what about the Mahdi? The, the Mahdi. The, the, well, well, yeah, okay. The, Short version here, Tony, is that universal monotheists, and that includes Christians, Muslims, and quite likely some liberal Jews, uh, see any kind of messianic figure as someone who would treat everyone equally and make the world great for everybody, including lions, lying down with lambs, and things like that. Whereas the tribal monotheists, and that includes these lunatics, as well as I would say an awful lot of the so-called uh, Jewish people in Israel, the Z Jewish Zionists, those people have a history of seeing their Messiah as being a military conqueror who subjugates the so-called Goyim or the other tribes uh, for the Jews who will then rule the world and their military leader will be their Messiah and he will shed blood of all of these Goyim as he conquers them and the world will be great after They've set themselves up as ruling it. So it's the universal monotheists versus the tribal monotheists. The tribal monotheist version of the Messiah is clearly the Antichrist for everybody else. Um, let's move on. To, we have more more horror Yikes. stories out of Israel, though. Yikes. We've got to cover these. This is this one blew my mind. My wife actually found this one uh, for me. They have like a, a Disney World type thing in, in Israel, in the occupied territories, where instead of seeing like androids of presidents that give speeches, you know, like in Disneyland, here you have like androids of Arabs that you can murder and it looks like a real murder. You blow them away with guns and they bleed and stuff. It, you know, they, they, for $115, you can kill a pretend Arab in one of these Disneylands in Israel. 
uh, this this is beyond mind blowing. Can you imagine, Tony, if somebody tried to create a Disneyland thing like this where you murder Jewish people uh, for fun for $150 to blow away a, a Jewish looking person? I mean, this is disgusting. I'm speechless, frankly. I don't know what to say about this. It's just so startling and telling and thoroughly indicative of the trouble we're in as humanity. Indeed. Uh, 15,000 to 25,000 tourists visit these, these camps and pretend to murder Arabs uh, for $115 per murder. Uh, and the vast majority are American Jews, according and to this report. And do you think people think they deserve it because, well, after all, didn't Arabs and Muslims do 9-11? That probably has something to do with it. Um, but, of course, nobody thinks about this kind of the incredible off-the-charts bigotry uh, exemplified by this story, but we have Breitbart run by these neocons and neocons in disguise like Steve Bannon, uh, who are saying that the pro-Palestinians are the, the racists, they're the anti-Semites, they're the Holocaust deniers, blah, 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 blah. What a bunch of nonsense. These uh, stories out of Breitbart suggest to me that Bannon is being pushed farther and farther away. Uh, Bannon, of course, uh, he, he was the uh, webmaster of, of, of Breitbart. And uh, so, so these stories emphasizing that the Scottish uh, pro-Palestinian people are really using their pro-Palestinian position to secretly get together and hate Jews and deny the Holocaust. Uh, this is the tenor of this, this story. And isn't it interesting that if you uh, do uh, take the human rights of Palestinian people, you face these kinds of accusations. Okay, well, uh, and you, you're likely to have your free speech rights attacked. Uh